Hello everybody, uh, my name is Edward Lorne, back again with the second update to the Nocturnal Reader's Box situation. Hopefully this will be the final update. First I'd like to explain why I took down the first video. The day after I uploaded that video, I received a claim from YouTube, sorry, a flag. Uh, they made me aware of a flag that someone had flagged the video for privacy violations and they cited from from zero the time signature from zero to fourteen um, the only thing that I could figure out was in those first fourteen minutes over my shoulder um, you could see pictures from nocturnal readers boxes about us page and on that page was a picture of Vincent Huerta his wife Jessica and their daughter my intention here was to make, try to make them, hu make them more human instead of a faceless company. I was trying to give a little more humanity to them and I paid for it. So I ended up taking the video down because this is on YouTube's side. The blur function wasn't working and I didn't want a strike against my channel over this nonsense. Now I'd like to talk about, as of right now, on their website, on the very first page of their website, they say that they are three weeks behind and they want to make people aware of this. The problem with that is they are three months behind, not three weeks. I mean, it's a difference of 21 days and 90 days. Um, as of the uploading of this video, they have rolled over again which is beyond belief um, when we finally get to the final email in this video you will understand why I say that okay now we will get to this in the newsletters but you will notice that at one point Vincent Huerta starts to promote another company another subscription box this one for movies uh, I guess B horror movies called Horror Bees the Instagram account is at horror.bees and when I tried to get a I guess a response or an answer from this company that is supposedly run by his parents I was blocked from the account within minutes this was at 3 a.m. the Instagram account is supposedly run by a 60 year old couple like I said his parents um, but within minutes of me questioning them I was not only blocked by them I was blocked by nocturnal readers box and then Vincent came over to my Instagram and went on a tirade in the comments when I posted the proof of me having commented on horror bees account one thing of note before we move on um, there are on my website right now I have uploaded images taken from Instagram that Vincent Huera uploaded to Instagram as proof that the DHL packages shipment for July was sent back to him. That is very important when we get to the final email. So I want you to correlate this yourself. I want you to see those pictures and I want you to read the emails that will be up with those pictures and I want you to make an informed decision for yourself. And before we move on to the shipping situation and their 3PL, I would like to bring up something that hits me rather personally. Um, during Vincent's tirade on my Instagram account, he said that he received EPUB copy of my work from someone else. This is piracy. To f to further escalate this, I have been in contact with Brian Keane, who runs the horror show. He's also a well-known horror author. And he's done his own piece on this, um, entitled The Nocturnal Reader's Botch, on his podcast. I will link to that below. You can check it out. You can verify. He also released an, a blog post. You can check that out to verify what I'm saying about that. In March, I believe it was, Brian was contacted by Nocturnal Reader's Box to get approval for an enamel pin. Brian told them, 
Sounds like a good idea. This is paraphrasing. You can read Brian's own words on his website or listen to the, to the podcast. He said, but you need to contact my publisher. Vincent never contacted his publisher. He just went ahead with an enamel pin. And then later on, without emailing Keen at all, he put an art print in the box. So Vincent Cuera has a history of using intellectual properties or pirate pirating. Now, yes, Vincent could have very well just tried to get under my skin by telling me that he pirated my work, but this is the kind of individual that we're dealing with. So knowing his history of using things without people's permission, I have no doubt that he pirated my work. On top of that, Robert McCammon was contacted, well, Robert McCammon's people, not McCammon himself, was contacted by Keene. And the Robert McCammon goods that were in the Nocturnal Reader's Box were not approved by that author either. So you have two authors whose intellectual property he has used to promote his own business. Me, for me personally, that is unforgivable. Now, you might have heard that part and think this guy is obviously biased. At this time, yes, I am. But I'm still going to try and fact check this as unbiasedly as possible. That's why I've uploaded everything to my website first because he deleted the original newsletters from MailChimp so I had to upload screenshots to my website. Now if you want to do, the reason I'm doing this is if you want to be able to track this, everything that I say, if you want to fact check and verify, everything is available on my website and if it is not I will link you to it personally from wherever I got the information from. Now an update on the DHL situation. In my original video I said th there were two ways that you could get tracking information. Those two ways were correct. It was correct that DHL did not have a copy of, well, could not find the packages. Now the reasoning for this is, I have finally clarified with DHL, what I failed to ask at the time was whether or not DHL would pick up pallets without payment, and they will. It turns out they will, surprisingly enough. Um, unlike USPS, who I have personal experience with, I've never worked with DHL, so I didn't think to ask. I know USPS will not pick up anything without payment. DHL, turns out they will. So the packages for July did go to DHL, but because they were not A, manifested, or B, paid for, within five days, they were sent back to Vincent's 3PL. Now, 3PL is a third-party logistics company. Vincent has, in the past, admitted that he uses a third-party company to help him out. Now, what he, on top of that, what he has said, and we'll get to that stuff, he has said in previous emails that he's either on site or has run down to the warehouse or so on and so forth that he also that he and his family were personally packing these boxes he said this between December and now the problem with that is it's all untrue that and that verification comes from Vincent himself in the newsletters the most recent newsletter but we're gonna get to all of that now I'm going to read the email chain that has been released since the last set of email chains. I am not able to verify the exact dates of these emails because I got them, I screenshotted them off of MailChimp. So if you have the dates, please comment down below. These, as of filming of, the, filming of this episode, um, this update, these are still up. Um, the original ones that I talk about in the original video are not still up. Um, they were deleted. If you go to those original emails, if you're a subscriber and you click on view in your browser, it'll come up with a message from MailChimp letting you know that they have been deleted. So, um, these were from between August 7th was the last email that I read from them, and then I was removed from their mailing, from their newsletter list. Um, it's also important to know that all of their social media is gone at this point. Their Facebook, their Twitter, their Instagram. Now they could all pop back up because it's been gone before and come back. 
but as of right now, everything is gone. This email is entitled, The Nocturnal Reader's Box, One More Update. Sorry about the dogs in the background. I can't do anything about it. For those of you not on social media, so we got the boxes back a little while ago, and they came with other stuff we ordered, mugs and shirts, totes, slash totes, on top of them, SMH, or shaking my head. So now we are going to go through them and make sure they are not busted up before we either rebox or just relabel. They are going priority, so you get them soon. Now this is important because those are the Instagram photos that he took of the staged boxes. Once again, we are going to get to the proof that he's never had, not since, sorry, not never, since December, he has not had possession of his boxes, of his products. Keep that in mind throughout this entire thing, that anytime he says he has the products, anytime he says he's relabeling, anytime he says he's doing anything with the boxes, he is not in possession of the boxes. We will get to him admitting this eventually. As soon as we get our labels approved, we can get out July, but we, sorry, but we might do these priority too. I am crunching some numbers to make sure it's possible. The labels are not a click and get approved kind of thing, but if you need the process, I will be getting to every email possible the evening, the evening and tonight, so give me a shout. August is not quite staged, but we have stations set up. We just have to get July out of the way before we can stage and pack. But three extra hands will hopefully make easy work of that. We are going to go back to daily posts and a lot more behind the scenes stuff for a while so you can see that we are working to get this stuff out to you. We are close. September theme, sudden death and bloodshed. So I got estimates, sorry, kudos to anyone who can attribute this quote without looking it up. So I got estimates to get July out priority. We are just going to do that as the labels for UPS have taken a bit longer than we were told. For anyone that has never set up a shipping contract, I wish it was easier, but it's not. We go through Crate Joy for our platform and our postage goes through Indicia and then UPS, then the freight company. So to label, so, sorry, so to print a label, it's not as easy as signing a contract and being ready to go. Each of those systems have to be linked together, and last time we did, it took multiple weeks. This time, I know someone at Indicia and, Crate jo and CJ, I'm guessing, I'm assuming that's Crate Joy. So we are going to bring that time down considerably. But we are not waiting any longer to get July out. Mind you, July still has not shipped, and it is the middle of September. I know people are waiting on June, and the tracking will come tomorrow when they start picking, getting picked up. Most of June has gone out, but there are still some people who have contacted me saying they are still waiting on June. We are going to avoid shipping freight for them and just have a big van or truck, whatever they got, come and pick them up. So July will start getting labeled Thursday and Friday and start being picked up Friday and hopefully Saturday if we can swing that. Once we get all of those out of the way, we can pack August and get that puppy out! Exclamation point. We are also going to do something for subscribers that we have never done before, but look for that announcement tomorrow as it's a surprise. I know I still have emails to go through, so please be patient. I have more helping hands, so we will be able to get back to answering you emails and messages much faster. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of the week. I am aiming to get as much as possible done to keep everyone informed unilaterally so no one has to join any fringe conspiracy groups on the internet to find out what's going on. Look for another update on social media tomorrow. I, before we move ahead, I need to make note of something. Around this time is when I realized, when I checked DHL and got word from them that they do pick up packages. They do, sorry, pallets. And then they manifest them and then charge the company that ships them out. What I did at that point was I did a little invest investigating. I checked the Better Business Bureau address for Vincent Huera's company, the Nocturnal Readers Box, and that address is in Tennessee. I'm not going to give out his address publicly. You can search that if you want to. It's public information. It is a residence. 
It is a house in a neighborhood that is not zoned for business. Now, the address that is the return address on the shipping labels is in Austin, Texas. It was as simple as me going to Google Maps and checking to find out what business was there to find out that it was Simple HQ. That was their packing facility. Now, I also spoke, well, I couldn't get a public comment from Simple HQ at all. I tried my best. But I was able to find out is that, oh, I contacted um, at Lumi, L-U-M-I, on Twitter in a public tweet and asked them if 3PLs allowed business owners to come in and pack for themselves just to double check, and I was told that it never happens. Alright, now we are going through uh, the very next email after that one um, about the fringe conspiracy groups. So, quick kind of update for you. We are changing things up to hopefully make things easier and faster for you to get the updates you need. We are going to attempt a more daily update system, but there's not really much news day to day, so it would be much of the same so this is what we are going to do every Sunday Tuesday and Friday we will be posting answers to some of your most relevant questions here in the newsletter on those days as well we will be posting on social media to keep the confusion at bay we are going to be we are not going to be answering questions in the comments anymore there's nowhere to put comments because they have since deleted or shut down all of their social media so here we go most pressing first. We found out that those still missing June never had their boxes come back to us from DHL. So on Thursday and Friday, and admittedly a very short time on Saturday, we packed and labeled the replacements. We have USPS coming to get them tomorrow. July. July has started to trickle out. No, it hadn't. But we cannot get all of the finished ones out until June gets out of the way for lack of space. It's coming! exclamation point we are hoping we are hoping to get done labeling July by Wednesday King box so there's a lot of craziness going on with this order so let's address a few things I've seen anything you have read anywhere not by us is likely a rumor or just false we purchased an ISBN and rights to publish this book with a publisher's help we are actually contractually the sole publisher but we are using a professional publisher and their help getting everything done with that sorry period with that said I can't just call the printer and demand an update as much as I wish I could I'm confused here I can call and ask for an update from my printer I don't understand why Vincent was unable to call and ask for an update from his printer you are paying this company for a service and they need to give you answers just like you are charging people money for a service and they deserve answers the last update I got last week was this I don't know how this picture is going to show up it looks a little small on my screen so here it is Vincent I wish I had more to tell you but I don't have much since last week we had to reformat the text again because it didn't quite fit the correct dimensions I'm sorry, working with a professional publishing company that can't get the dimensions of a book right before printing? It's, there's so much wrong with this, but we're going to continue. Other than that, the boards are all being stamped. I hesitate to give you more of an update because I am not sure just yet on the end date. Once we get this part done with the formatting, we will be waiting on Chuck for the new cover page approval and we can move forward. One last thing, can you send me the artist's mailing address so that once they do get done with formatting, we can send some pages to be remarked? Or are you waiting to do tip-in pages? Okay, this is the next email, the following email. Got a little news for you. First, a quick sorry and thank you. I started answering emails today while out away from the warehouse. Again, he's never been to the warehouse whatsoever. Holy cow, you guys have been busy. Sorry for not being super present lately. I honestly can't keep up with the emails, but I am going to work on solely that tomorrow. All the messages, all the emails, knock them out. Also, thank you to those that sent messages and have inquired on my well-being. It's very much appreciated. June dot 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 
Okay, so we built a bunch of boxes for replacements, but I need a list to check off to make sure we don't send out duplicates. Because as I started going through the labels, I found like 20 duplicates. It will happen inevitably because we got back some pretty terrible counts from DHL and our numbers are just thrown off. So, if you still need a box for June, send an email or reply to this one with the subject June list. Also, if you still need a refund and don't have an active dispute, send one with the subject as refund. I will search specifically for those subject lines. Last, if you need a water bottle replacement from the drug-free one, put water bottle in the subject and include anything else that needs replacing. I honestly don't know how those got in there, but I am sorry for the mistake. This I believe because he doesn't pack his own boxes. Though what the water bottle is in regards to is for some somehow for some reason they were sent um, a, people were sent a water bottle with a charity organization on it. It wasn't horror themed at all. Um, who knows why that happened? Once again, I couldn't get a public comment from the shipping company, the 3PL Simple HQ. I am going to knock out those first thing in the morning and likely through lunch, and we can be rid of June for good this time. Either way, I had all the boxes put off to the side and we resumed labeling July. About 300 have been shipped. No, they haven't. No one, no one has received July, period. And about 600 need to be, a la need to be labeled. Again, as of the shooting of this video, nobody has received July's box. This is September 15th, or four, sorry, September 14th when I'm shooting this video. Nobody's received a single box for July. It's only taking this long because we have to sort everything by size after it's already been packed, so we always double check the sizes every few boxes just in case. And mistakes still happen, but it's not too many. August will be labeled while it's being packed, so it will be so much faster. Okay, that's stuff out of the way. Some questions. These are questions from the community to Vincent. If you're trying to catch up, how are you going to be able to ship shop items? I guess that's a typo, sorry. If you're trying to catch up, how are you able how are you going to be able to ship shop items on time? Jessica is helping to get all the shop items out on Friday with me. Next question. Is August still a big box or is September bigger now? I think that September is bigger but not for the reason the customer asked, because it was posted in a pretty weird way. It's just bigger because I had more fun with September than August. I got to make a serial killer bar glass and a Pogo the Clown shirt. I mean, it got pretty weird in here while doing research for some of the hidden things in the, in the designs, but August is still a great box. And yes, September is sold out. If you try and renew while in sold out mode, you will be moved to the next box instead. Next question. Am I Icarus? Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good description. Now, Icarus, unless I am misinformed, flew too close to the sun, his wings melted, and he plummeted to earth and died. So I'm not sure what that's in reference to. And if I'm wrong on my mythology, I apologize, but moving on. Um, I don't, basically what I'm saying is I don't understand that question or that answer. Are the other King items in production? Not the shirts because we had a few to sell and now we have a bunch of disputes so I don't want to buy a crazy amount of shirts in the wrong size. The pins, yes. I will ask for some pictures. No idea where they are in production because that is easily replaced and not my biggest concern. I know several people who do good work and can get them done fast if anything should happen to this shipment, so rest easy on that. Not that anyone is super concerned. Next question. Are we not going to respond to comments anymore? No, that's crazy. We are not going to answer questions in the comment sections anymore, though. That adds way too much confusion. I'm... I'm confused. So it says... Are we not going to respond to comments anymore? He says, no, that's crazy, as if he, he is going to respond to comments. But then he says he's not going to in the comments section. That, I guess he's trying to say that he's only going to be responding in newsletters. I, I, I suppose that's what he meant. Um, and here, this next, this next part is very important. Um, am I, this next question. Am I ever going to take responsibility for being so far behind? I thought I had. 
Maybe it wasn't clear enough because my messages are so confusing. I am sorry that we got behind. I used to love doing this job and interacting with everyone and creating for you, but that stopped when I was admitted. He's talking about him going to the hospital for his PTSD episode. Until I got deep into September box. I was behind a few weeks, and with the luck of a dumpster fire, a series of events created all of the delay. Have I lied? Absolutely not. I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that part right there. Have I lied? Absolutely not. Regardless of what, regardless of what some people want to think, I have tried to give the most accurate timeline I could. There's tons of theories swirling around, and there is no credence to them. Yeah, I may have put out a statement that was confusing, but I didn't lie to anyone. He, he doubles down right there that he did not lie. We've just had horrible luck, and I haven't been a very happy person. The non-productive threats and demand that I... The non-productive threats and demand that I get don't help, so I tend to not handle that well either, so I am sorry. I am Icarus but I think I am leveling out. At least I hope so. That's all I got right now. Email me some more questions for the next update if you have them. Now we move on to the email where he promotes his parents company horrorbees.com. Just a bit. Sorry for the lack of updates. I have been trying to get this all straightened out so I have something to tell you. So the disputes are currently beating me up. So I am still working on July, but it's slower going than I would like. Only 600 have gone out. Again, at this point, it is September 15th, and not a single package for July has shipped to customers. I know you're tired of hearing excuses, but I am sorry. I want to take a pause here, because I know that Vincent will watch this. This is why people were upset. It's the constant, constant lying to your customers. I don't understand it. And when we finally get to the final email, Vincent, you admit as much yourself. This is not conspiracy theory. No matter, we are working on some extra funding to get these out. And once that immediately happens, I even have some family that is helping me get everything out for free on my end. Again, he was using a 3PL in another state. His family was not boxing these. I am not giving up or folding. When all of the funds were filed, it helped a pretty large amount of fun sorry, it held. When all of the funds were filed, it held up a pretty large amount of funds and negatively impacted production and our ability to get stuff out. I would just ask that you not file any more so we could get caught up. Just an ask as a small business. If you want, there is an info card for July on the very bottom of this email. It is probably one of my favorite boxes besides September, and I promise we are working to get it to you, so spoiler, spoiler warning. I'm going to skip the heads up section of this email, and I'm going to go directly to the bottom. The heads up stuff is just uh, promotional uh, materials for them talking about books and podcasts and movies. But at the very end, in very small type, it says, Also, my parents started their horror company, Horror Bees. Their first month is The Blob, 1988, and then Piranha, 1978, and Silent, Light, Silent Night, Deadly Night, 1984, for November and December, respectively. They have a few months already on their site, but the calendar is already planned for a year, and year two is still being pitched to studios, but I think they may be done soon. Anyways, if you like horror movies, check it out. If not, please don't take any drama their way. HorrorBees.com. Now, at this point in time, all I wanted was a statement from them regarding their connection to Nocturnal Reader's Box, and I will link to that down in the description, but it is also up on my Instagram page. If you read through the comments, there are quite a few comments, but all of Vincent's comments have been removed. If you would like those comments, I have screenshots of everything. Okay, now we are going on to the very last email that was received before the shooting of this video. This is going to be important for everything we've gone over so far. This is fact-checking for everything that he has said about not lying, about packing boxes himself, about having his family help. 
need to keep all that in mind while I am reading this email. It is also posted on my blog if you'd like to read along yourself. Just to clear a few things up. Okay, so we have a packing company that is holding our goods and refusing to release them. Apparently, this company is making up stuff about us and just spreading rumors, but we are now officially filed for litigation against them. This is not something that we could help and have made numerous attempts to ask them to release our goods. We did, in fact, file a 60-day notice to terminate the contract, and since then, they have been combative and have refused to do the job we have paid them for. In fact, even though they did not pack July, they will not release our goods until we pay them for that. That is on top of them owing us thousands of dollars for shipping, overpaid dues, and damaged goods slash reshipping. Now, as far as all of this is concerned, Vincent Huera stated in multiple responses to people that he owned half of the shipping company when he brought it up. If he owns half of the shipping company, why, Vincent, I'm asking you personally, you can respond down there in the comments below, why don't you just go pick up your product from the company that you own half of? I don't understand and neither does anyone else. We want an answer regarding why you, half owner of this company, cannot show up at your own building and pick up your products. Please, comments below. Thank you. So why didn't you know? Here, here comes the explanation on why all these conflicting stories. We felt like things were under control on their end. We were planning on getting our stuff back and just doing everything how we did before December. So he's been, here's confirmation that he's been using this 3PL since December. And it would have been possible after we scaled down, which was what we intended to do these few months. Anyone that has been subscribed before December knows that the most we were ever late was a day or two before that. That's not true either. I've spoken with reps for the, for the company as far back as November, saying that packages in November were late also. Um, there's also a dispute on the Better Business Bureau all the way back from 2017. I think it's from June, but you'll have to uh, check that in the first video. I linked to that Better Business Bureau uh, complaint. So, after that, all of the wrong shirt sizes, the missing items, the wrong items, the lateness was due to this horrible company. So he wasn't, he wasn't packing these things himself. His family wasn't packing these things himself. He is saying that this company messed up over and over and over again. I was advised not to speak about it. This is odd because he says he sought legal counsel and they told him not to talk about it, but here he is talking about it. So he went against legal counsel and decided to talk about it. So he put his own case, if it exists, he put his own lawsuit in jeopardy by writing this email. Okay. I was advised not to speak about it, and I wouldn't because I didn't want to throw another company under the bus, because I truly felt like they were trying to improve. So I claim the errors and lateness as our own. April was our real crux. The King Box went on sale, and I prepaid for 2K of the book boards to be made, and the dies to create all the designs and art. Well, we know what happened there, and because I prepaid and it's still being made, we are out a lot of money. It's because some agent decided that King that it's because some agent decided that instead of taking the contract proposal to King, he was just going to deny it. Yes, this is how agents work. They are mediators. They don't have to take everything if it is not their job to. If King allows them to do those things, that is the agent's job to mediate. We apparently didn't offer enough money. I would like to see proof of this. I would like to see verifiable proof that this agent turned you down because you weren't paying enough. We uh, sorry. Some people speculate that it was because we told people that they were being signed too early, but no, that's not it. We were advised that if we mentioned it, to say that it was a possibility, which is the actual reason why it was so vague on the signing part. So after prepaying for so much and, drink and thinking that we were going to sell them, we lost a ton of money. That's not even counting the disputes and refunds. He has admitted here 
that he was selling something that was not set in stone. He, he's been collecting money from people for this king box for I don't know how many months. I couldn't actually ch track back exactly when it began. If you know, please comment down below, but only if you have proof. He was selling something he wasn't 100% sure on, and even when he got verification that he wasn't going to be able to do it, he still continued to, to sell this, this king box that nobody has seen anything from. We don't even know the publisher who's working on it. This is not to say we couldn't make it, but then the health issue came, and basically the VA sucks, and yada yada, here we are. Plans. We had so many plans and honestly loved doing this. But when people started prying into our personal lives and literally harassing my parents and family members and trying as hard as they can to dig up dirt, it's enough already. Sorry for the conflicting messages this year. I tried as hard as possible to get by without having all of our personal dealings out there and just let it be a fun thing. These aren't personal dealings, Vincent. This is your, this is your business. This is not personal. It is your business. As far as the address, your 3PL, all this stuff, all of this stuff is business. And it is public information. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't understand where you're coming from with any of this being personal. If you'd like to, if you'd like to tell us why, please comment down below. And no, I'm not going to talk to you in DMs any longer because all you do is lie. That's all you do is lie. To those who just decided to file disputes. That's fine. I understand and have been just accepting them. I am to the point when I can't afford to ship or really do anything, so what's an extra $18 plus refund a dispute? That's not even me being flippant. That is me not caring anymore and just trying to get everything I can done to get those that actually care the boxes they paid for. Do what you need to do. Hopefully by the grace of God we will make it through this. Stop reading here unless you care about us, personally, or it's just going to bore you to death. Us. Someone asked on my mom's business page how we were doing personally, and I would like to say that the girls are doing great, and thank you so much for the concern. I try and keep Jessica out of everything, and only involve her if necessary. She is the glue, and if she falls apart, we all do. No matter what happens to me or the business, my girls will always be taken care of, and I am grateful for those who have reached out. I have had much better days personally. I am not a happy person, and it's not just because of all this, though it adds to it. It's people who think that for some reason we are doing this to them on purpose, like we are just stealing so much money, exclamation point. I didn't pay my rent this month, so yeah, we just bought the stuff for all the boxes and are trying to recover from the king fiasco and are trying really hard to survive life. Either way, we don't expect everyone, or even most, given the horrible messages we've received, to understand, but to those that do know that we did make a ton of money, and after bills and a very meager savings, we put it all back into the company for signed books and hardcovers and giveaways and better artists and bigger boxes because we loved the community. And then at the very end, it says, heads up, Apparently, I can't promote my family business because people are childish and abusive. You cannot promote another company that we do not entirely know that you're not a part of when you can't even ship from your own company. You have to understand how this mars any, any kind of promotion you do for anybody. Anybody attached to you right now is going to look bad. You have reps that are heartbroken because they put their faith in you, Vincent, and now they're all over social media begging people not to blame them because you've been lying to people. And yes, this video has a much different tone than the last one because now I am upset with this situation because you made it personal. You're the one who was flippant about pirating my work. That's how I pay my bills. That's how I support my family, and here you are joking about pirating it. So yes, if you, especially the people watching this, if you want to believe that I am biased, you better believe it, because it's the truth now. I was an outside party, but now it's personal. I am done with this situation. This video will last as documentation for 
as long as I have a YouTube channel, and I'm not going anywhere. If you still support Nocturnal Reader's Box, that's fine. That's your money. You can do whatever you want to. You can even comment down in the comment section about how big of a bully I am, about how terrible I am. That's fine. I won't even respond to you. I'll just leave it up there without comment. I'm moving on. As far as the rest of you that are still waiting, still waiting on this man to either refund you or send you a box, I am sorry, but I can't do this anymore, mainly because I am no longer an unbiased outsider. He is stealing from artists. He is pirating my work, supposedly. Well, that's what he said, anyways. So, I am now biased. I will completely, I will completely admit it. And I am done with the situation. So, Vincent Huera, my final word to you is, do the right thing before you end up in prison for fraud. Thank you for watching.